Hello, my name is Matthew Marqua and welcome back to the Unwrapping in 3D Studio Max video tutorial series. In this particular video, titled Applying and Customizing Checker Materials, we're going to learn just that, but in 3D Studio Max. So let's get started. All right, so now that we understand a little more about UV distortion and how checker textures help us spot it, let's see several ways in which we can apply and customize a checker texture in 3D Studio Max. And to demo all of this, let me introduce you to a little silly model I call Thingamabob. It's actually modeled in such a way to best help students learn the unwrapping process, and it's going to be the geometry I'll be using throughout the rest of this video series. Either way, let's start off with the easiest and quickest way to get a checker texture on our geometry. So the first thing we need to do is to select our object and then add a modifier called Unwrap UVW. You may have noticed that I have my modifier set up as buttons. This is so I can speed up my workflow so I don't have to keep searching down the modifier list here every time I need one. To learn how to set up your buttons just like this, watch the last video in this tutorial series called Unwrapping Best Practices. Now with the Unwrap modifier on our object, we want to scroll down in the settings and click on Open UV Editor, which will open up this window titled Edit UVWs. And if we head over to the top right corner of this window and see this drop down menu, we can choose Texture Checker, say that 10 times fast, which is the quickest and easiest way to apply a material or checker material to our object. So I click on it here, and you'll see it show up. Now this is what the image actually looks like, and of course we're seeing it not correctly on the model, but that's because this model hasn't been unwrapped yet. So don't freak out if it doesn't look right, because, well, that's the point. It's not unwrapped correctly, so it's not going to display correctly. Now if we want to use the default texture that Max has, we can click right here and choose Checker Pattern, and you'll see that it will update it to this one, where we can see this kind of gray and, well, both are gray, but light gray and dark gray checker texture on the model. By default, it is actually on this in the dropdown, but it doesn't display until we choose first the image and then go back to this. Now there might be a few situations in which you add these checker textures to your model and still nothing is being displayed. If you find that this is the case for you, go over and select your object, come over and instead of adding an unwrap UVW modifier, add a UVW map modifier. The default, which is just planar, should be totally fine. Now if you put an unwrap UVW modifier on it, scroll down to the open UVW editor button, click on that, you'll actually see that we have some UVs in the scene. If you go to this drop down menu and add your texture checker, you'll now see that it will show up correctly on the model. So while technically that's pretty much all you really need to know in Max to add a checker texture to your object, there are alternatives to adding checker textures and ways to customize your checker texture that I want to show you. One of these first customization options I want to show you, which is in the aptly named brings up the options dialog, we click on this and we're going to see a section down here called checker tiling. This actually changes how often the checker is tiling on the object. Right now it's set to one, but if we increase that to any other number, say four or higher, you'll see it repeats more both obviously in the window here and on our model. You can of course also just drag up and down this slider to change things as well. And then once you're done, you can come down here and just hit OK. Now in the case of having a custom checker texture that you want to use on your model, you have a couple of options in order to apply it. The first one, now if we remember going back to this drop down and choosing texture checker, we see that we add this PNG. It's even named up here UV underscore checker PNG. If you happen to want to change that completely and pretty much permanently, go to this file location in your Explorer, as we can see here, and you'll see the UV underscore checker dot PNG. So if you're looking to replace that one, just rename it the exact same thing as a PNG file, save over that, and now every time you use it in Max, it'll use that image instead. The other option you have is to come over here in the drop down again and then choose pick texture. If you choose pick texture, we can come over here and choose bitmap or any of these other ones if you want. But bitmap allows us to choose an image, open up a dialog here. You just happen to find that image on your computer, hit open and you'll be set. So it pretty much does the same thing. This one will be more temporary with the previous option being more permanent. Now, if you don't have a special image you'd like to use, but you would rather say change the color of the checker pattern, you can do that also. Now, in order to do this, we got to make sure that we both have an unwrap UVW modifier on object and we have our checker pattern aside to the object and showing in the viewport. Now, what we need to do is bring up the material editor by either hitting M as the hotkey or by going over to this button and clicking on it. Now, we can click and hold to also change it to either the compact editor or the slay editor. In this case, I want to choose slay editor. If we open up the Slay Editor, this is what it looks like. It's a node-based system. Now, the cool thing is if we want to actually grab this material is we can go over here, move our editor to the side, and click this button, which is the Pick Material from Object button. 
Click on that eyedropper, hover over object, and select it. Now you'll see in the viewport of our Slay Editor that we have a material. If I kind of center this so you can see it a little bit better, we'll see that we have our material right here and the checker pattern assigned to its diffuse channel. We can rename our object or our material pretty easily here by double clicking on this node and coming up in here and changing this. Or we can change some of the settings down here easily by double clicking on this. Obviously we can tell when something's selected because of the dotted line around it. In addition, we can also change how often the texture tiles here as well. But it's down here where we can actually change our colors. So let's say I just want to choose an awful combination of colors. I can do so by just double clicking on the color palette moving this over here with our color selector and choosing say, ooh, a horrendous yellow mixed with an eye burning pink. Oh my eyes. So you can go any direction you want with the colors on these checker patterns. And finally, to manually build a material you wanna put on the object, you simply come over here to the side, grab a standard material, drag it into the scene, and then you can add either a checker texture here, which you can also drag into the scene, or a bitmap that you can click on, find your bitmap here, and then open it up. Once you have that selected, you can then grab this node and put it into the input node of the diffuse. At that point, you can change how often it tiles by double clicking on this, doing the same thing we saw before with the tiling section, grabbing the material itself, and then selecting the object in our viewport, and coming up here, and clicking on Assign Material to Selection. Finally, with the material selected itself, make sure that you click on this button, which is Show Shaded Material in Viewport, in order to see it within your viewport. You know that it's working because of the red slash on the material, as we can see over here. So that wraps up pretty much everything I wanted to talk to you guys about today about checker textures and how to apply them. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.